Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Today's going to be a great show. We're going to be right here at Iowa State University at the Beef Nutrition Farm with Dr. Dan Loy. We're going to talk about different things that can go on, not only on how you mix your feed, but how you can make sure that your mix is adequate. Stay tuned. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning is brought to you by Profusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining me today. Today, we're gonna to stay right here in Iowa and we're gonna go out to the Beef Nutrition Farm here at Iowa State University where we're gonna meet up with Dr. Dan Loy. Dr. Dan Loy is the director of the Iowa Beef Center and he is a ruminant nutritionist extraordinaire for feedlots. As we go out to the feedlot, we're going to learn a little bit about the Beef Nutrition Farm and some of the things just kind of to kickstart us on understanding how to mix diets for cattle. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about feed mixing today. And we're here at the Iowa State University Beef Nutrition Research Farm. But before we do that, I just want to give you a little bit of an overview of this facility where we're located. I like to tell our students that with, all the, with the number of pens, we have 60 pens in this uh, particular barn that you're looking at right now, plus some additional outside pens. And, if, and these pens hold six head. And if it was a traditionally sized feedlot, this would, uh, in terms of the amount of data and the amount of uh, information management that we do, this is kind of like about a 10,000 head feedlot in miniature. And you'll notice that everything's in miniature here. Our feed uh, unit is in miniature, our pens are small, and even our feed wagons are small, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But basically they function and do uh, the same thing that we do uh, in larger feedlots, just at a smaller scale. The types of research that we do here are uh, very, quite varied. Uh, there's a lot of trace mineral nutrition research that's done, led by Dr. Stephanie Hansen and her lab. Uh, we also do a feed intake research. Uh, there's some individual feed intake units uh, where we can measure differences in feed intake. A lot of research looking at growth promotants and growth stimulants. And so um, this, is, this is where it's at in terms of beef nutrition research here at Iowa State. And uh, if you ever get to Iowa State, we hope that you come and see us. Our topic today is, uh, is feed mixing. And so we're going to get into some of the various aspects of feed mixing. Uh, including mixer types. We'll talk a little bit about some of the things that can make feed mixing um, varied and things like uh, f uh, sequencing of ingredients, uh, timing of feed mixing, uh, and, and other issues that can be related to some of the challenges that we've uh, run into in feed mixing. And then finally, we'll have a little bit of a quick discussion about how we evaluate feed mixing using uh, the Penn State shaker box and evaluating the uniformity of particle size in a particular uh, diet. So in, in terms of feed mixing, there's really four rations that we think about in a feedlot ration. The one that's formulated by the nutritionist, the one that goes into the feed wagon, and that basically is the accuracy of loading uh, the feed wagon or, or feed uh, truck, 
and then the, what the animal actually consumes. And that's the one that we're going to concentrate on today because feed mixing uniformly makes that every bite that that animal consumes is exactly as was formulated, or at least that's the goal. And then finally, the last one is uh, related to sorting that cattle can do during the day, which is, is uh, basically what the animal actually consumes. So those are the four rations that we have uh, in terms of beef cattle nutrition. And so we'd like for those to all be the same. Folks, that was a great segment. Dr. Loy brings home some great points. I really like that there are four rations. What we write down on paper, what goes in the mixer, the ration that goes in the bunk, and then the ration that the cattle actually eat. Stay tuned for more Doc Talk. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-strip, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk, Dr. Dan Thompson, and we're at Iowa State University with the Iowa Beef Center Director, Dr. Dan Lloyd. We're out at the Beef Nutrition Farm talking about different mixer types and different things that can go on when you mix feed for your cattle. Yeah, Dan, uh, right now we're going to talk about mixer types, and actually I'm standing in front of our research, one of our research mixers, and this is the one that's used predominantly in our small pens, where we have uh, six head pens, and so it does small batches. So you can see we, we really do uh, things in miniature here, but it really is exactly a small, a scaled down version of, of a lot of mixers that you'll see in feedlots around, around the country. There's different, ty different types of mixers, and let's start first with um, with the, the, the type, of whether it's a stationary mixer uh, or a mounted mixer on a feed truck um, or a mixer that's associated with uh, a pull, pull behind behind a tractor. Uh, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you see this, the stationary mixer uh, allows you to separate the um, mixing component from the delivery component. So from that standpoint, from a time standpoint, it can be very efficient. So you'll see stationary mixers very frequently in large feedlots. It also increases the precision in terms of getting uh, feed into the mixer because you can use augers or belts that are perhaps a little more precisely controlled than a loader bucket on an end loader or uh, in the case here, uh, uh, a skid loader is what we use in, in this particular unit. So uh, it adds a little more precision. There's a little more cost involved. So the, the stationary mixers are more likely to be in a, in a feedlot where they're mixing continually throughout the day and then have feed trucks that come through and, and unload feed throughout the day. The truck mounted mixer is kind of the next level of uh, mixing. This would be uh, for larger feedlots that uh, have not gone yet to a stationary mixer, there the mixing is you have a, a dedicated piece of equipment that mixes and delivers feed to uh, the, the bunks. And so that's kind of uh, very common in a lot of feedlots that you see across the United States. The pull behind feed wagon behind the tractor is a little more popular for farmer feeders because then they can use the tractor for other, part, or other things that they do around the, the farm and other enterprises, so it's not necessarily the, the power behind the feed mixing does not have to be dedicated to that uh, feed mixing component. So the tractor can be used for, for other factors. So for smaller feeders, uh, farmer feeders, 
um, that is probably the, the type of uh, feed mixing of choice. And certainly that's uh, uh, something that we see quite, uh, quite often. Uh, in, within those mixers, we have um, different types of mixers. We have vertical mixers and horizontal mixers. The vertical mixers mix feed by gravity. Think of tossing a salad would be the best example of, of uh, mixing something by gravity. The horizontal mixers are more likely to mix by stirring action. So think of baking a cake. That would be uh, a, a good analogy that we use there. Though within those mixers, they can be uh, um, auger mixers. A lot of the vertical mixers have an auger associated with those. Uh, the horizontal mixers can be an auger mixer. Uh, a paddle type mixer, those are usually more common for, um, for more concentrated feeds than you'd see in a feedlot. A lot of the, the uh, uh, feedlot mixers would be reel type mixers or a combination of a reel and an auger. So with the reel mixer you get some of the gravity action along with the stirring action and it gives you a little more flexibility. It, with the mixers that we have uh, that involve the gravity type, uh, those are more, the vertical mixers, those are more popular in when we have a lot of forage in the ration, the backgrounding type ration uh, relative to a, uh, a more of a finishing ration. The finishing rations, we need to have more of the mixing action rather than the, the uh, uh, gravity. And so uh, the auger mixers or the reel type mixers that incorporate both of those give you kind of a flexibility to have either uh, uh, both a, for backgrounding rations as well as, as finishing rations. Some great information there, folks, from Dr. Dan Loy here at Iowa State University. You know, there's different types of mixers, whether it's stationary on the ground, on your feed truck, or something that you pull behind. We know that there's horizontal and there are vertical mixers, and you're gonna use those vertical mixers with higher roughage diets, horizontal mixers with more concentrate diets. Much more to come on feed mixing here at Iowa State University on Doc Talk. The State of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University, and we're working with one of Iowa State's finest, Dr. Dan Loy who is a beef nutritionist and he's also the director of the Iowa Beef Center. We're going to head on out to the beef nutrition unit so we can learn some of the pitfalls or things that can go wrong when you mix your feed. Okay, thank you, Dan. Well, some of the factors that can affect the, uh, the efficiency of mixing or, or some of the challenges that we have with mixing are uh, uh, the sequencing of ingredients and the types of ingredients. Um, and the, uh, some of the other factors include the time of mixing uh, and uh, in the type of mixer. And all of those factors are different for every ration, for every mixer. And so um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit, little bit later about how we evaluate uh, mixing, but um, some of the things to think about is that in terms of mixing sequence, what's the optimum? We get that question a little bit, uh, or get that question quite a bit. Um, and a lot of it depends on the type of ration. And it's just a general rule of thumb, and again, this can change depending on the type of mixer and the ingredients, but as a general rule of thumb, the ingredient that is the highest proportion in the mixer will often go in first. And so in a finishing ration, that's usually the grain mix. And then, then we add uh, supplements that are associated with the grain mix, uh, so that, so that, and, uh, uh, and then the sequence after that could include corn silage or a ration conditioner. It could include some forages at some point, um, and, or it could include corn co-products, uh, which uh, uh, can be added at, at different, part, different times in, in the mixing sequence. In a high forage ration, like a backgrounding ration, especially with the vertical mixers, more often than not, we see the forage being added first in the ration. And uh, typically, that's one of the last things in a finishing ration. So it really depends on the type of ration and the mixing sequence. 
In terms of the timing uh, that we would, uh, uh, the length of time, I would start first by checking your manufacturer's recommendation. Most manufacturers have a recommendation of number of minutes that the feed should be mixed. Often it's three to five minutes, but it can vary around that. But again, uh, the, how full the mixer is, uh, the type of mixer can all, and the ingredients that are used can affect that. So uh, again, uh, we'd encourage you to do some evaluation of, of your mixing, how precise you are in terms of your mixing, and then come back and see if you can improve that by changing either mixing time or mixing sequence uh, al along with that. The other factors that can affect the efficacy of your mixing is how full the mixer is. If you overfill it, you're going to mix more poorly. Uh, and even if it's underfilled, it, you'll, it, it will mix somewhat poorly because it's, they're often designed to be at you know, around 80, 85, 90% capacity, something like that. Again, your, um, your manufacturer will have some guidelines uh, related to that as well. So all of these factors can affect uh, how you know, how, how precise your, your mixing can be. We did a study a few years ago where we added um, our wet corn gluten feed as the second ingredient after hay, and, we, and, that was, uh, and we had issues with clumps of corn gluten feed that would occur. And so, uh, again, with, uh, with, with other corn co-products, that may be quite as simple. I think that had to do with the moisture and so forth, but um, again, the type of ingredient, the mixer type, all factor into uh, to how these factors go together, as well as wear of your particular uh, piece of equipment. So maintenance is critically important as well. That's some great information, Dr. Loy. Sequence of the ingredients, amount of time that you put in the mixer, don't overfill, don't underfill. All of these things go into making a good, complete feed for your cattle. We'll be back after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no-strip, no-needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dan Loy. We're out at the Beef Nutrition Farm here at Iowa State University where Dr. Loy is talking about now how you can make sure that the mix that you're delivering is adequate for your cattle. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, so at this point, I think a lot of people may be asking, so how do you really do a, a mixer evaluation? Is historically what we've done is uh, periodically when we deliver a load of feed, we would take 10 samples uniformly spaced apart, 10 samples from un the unloading of that particular load of feed and then send those in for a complete nutrient analysis and look at the nutrients that are widely different between the feed ingredients. So if we want to look at our mixing our protein supplement, we'd analyze for protein, uh, for fiber component, or for forages, we'd do fiber and, and send it in and do that feed analysis. And, and I still advocate doing that from time to time, but it can be expensive because uh, if you take 10 samples, uh, and uh, you do a nutrient analysis that costs you know thirty dollars for each sample that gets to be a three hundred dollar uh, program and uh, again that's the most precise way to do it uh, but but it can be fairly expensive 
So what we've kind of gone to is, is uh, if we do have issues with mixing, more often than not, it is that we're not getting the particle sizes or feedstuffs of different particle sizes uniformly mixed. And that's where the particle separator comes in. So we'll use the particle separator as kind of a, uh, uh, something that, uh, or as a way to, uh, to do basically the same thing. And what we do is then we will, for the nutrient analysis, we would take the, we'd take the standard deviation and divide it into the mean and gives us the coefficient of variation. So the standard deviation divided by the mean is the coefficient of variation. And if that's less than 10% as a rule of thumb, we had a good feed mix. So that's a good target. You might target 5%, but 10% would be a good uniform feed. So using the particle separator, we reduce the cost of that somewhat. And what we would do is we'll look at the, the percent of the feed that falls in the basic different trays of different particle sizes. So we have the, the uh, this is the top tray, which is 3 fourths of an inch. This is the uh, second tray, and the two top two trays would be the effective fiber in the ration. And so often we'll take the percent of the feedstuffs that are in the top tray or the top two trays uh, to uh, evaluate the, the particle uh, or the uh, particle size of the feedlots and do that um, do that analysis. Now, if you have a finer ground feed that uh, will you know like a high corn silage feed stuff that's that's uh, chopped fairly fine, that may, not, that may not be the most effective way to do it. So there are some smaller uh, particle size trays. For our example today, we'll just use the top two. Uh, here is uh, one that is, I think this is one is one millimeter. Uh, we even have one that's basically a screen door, which will allow us to separate the, the very fine particles that would end up in the bottom tray. So for the feed that we're evaluating today, we're going to use the top two trays. And what we would do is take our 10 uniform samples. In this case, this is, uh, we'll just show you one sample that we collected. We'll put that feed in our tray. And now I'm going to give it five, I'm going to give it five shakes on each side. So four turns around, I'm going to do that twice. And so that we need to do, have a uniform technique each time we do this and do this with each sample. So then our next step is to weigh the feed that's in the top tray. Notice that this is our long stem hay. This would be the, the forage that, uh, that uh, will be regurgitated, rechewed. It uh, is uh, good for rumen health and so forth. The second tray is the smaller uh, particle size hay. Uh, if we had corn silage, a lot of that would end up in the second tray and the whole kernels of corn. And then the bottom tray now has our finer particle size. This would be the fiber that is too small to be effective fiber and our cracked corn or rolled corn. And so our, our step would be to weigh the feed that's in the top uh, two trays um, and do that and calculate the percentage of the feed that is in the top two trays. And then, and then do that for all 10 samples, calculate the coefficient of variation um, and if it's less than 10% for those 10 samples, then we would have a relatively uniform sample. And so we do that periodically, and then we can change our mixing time, we can change our mixing sequence, and see if we can improve on that coefficient of variation and do that periodically. And so that is how we would do a mixer test evaluation. So thanks, Dan. Uh, glad to, uh, to be here today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Dr. Loy, great information. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember the take-home messages. The four rations, the one you put on paper, the one you put in the mixer, the one that you put in the bunk, and then the one that the cattle eat. All of it is related. Remember that there are different types of mixers, stationary, ones on feed trucks, ones that we can pull behind. And then of those mixers, there can be vertical mixers, which we use with more roughage-based diets, or horizontal mixers with paddles and augers that we'll use with more concentrate-based diets. 
Some of the biggest mistakes that we make or issues that can happen with mixing is making sure you have the ingredients put in the mixer in the right sequence. Make sure that you have the right amount of time that, that, that allows it to mix thoroughly. And then don't underfill or overfill that mixer wagon. And then when you're going to evaluate your diet, go out, take those samples along after you've delivered feed, bring them in, shake them in the Penn State shaker box so that you find out the roughage and the fines are equal. Decrease variation, increase consistency, that's the name of the game. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. If you want to find out more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University. Thanks, Dr. Dan Loy, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zinpro.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.